The table below shows the income distribution of a group of workers in a farm. Calculate the coefficient of skewness of the distribution. To calculate the coefficient of skewness for this data, the first step is to remember your formula. According to Carl Pearson, coefficient of skewness is given by this formula. Skewness, skewness is equal to theory mean minus median. Theory mean, theory into bracket mean minus median all over the standard deviation. That is uh, the formula for calculating the coefficient of skewness. The reason why I brought out this formula first is because this formula will tell us what we are going to have on our table. From this formula, we need the we need to calculate the mean of this data. We need to calculate the median of this data as well as the standard deviation of this data. Now let us proceed. The formula for mean is given by this x bar is equals to summation fx all over summation f where summation fx is the sum of the product of the frequency and the midpoint of the class interval so from this formula i still need to get the midpoint of this class interval to get the midpoint of the class interval which is x i have to sum the upper class interval and the lower class interval together then divide it by two so to get the value of these cells which is the midpoint of this in class interval i'm going to have 49.5 which is the lower class interval plus 69.5 which is the upper class interval all over 2 if you punch your calculator 49.5 plus 69.5 divided by 2 that is 119 119 all over 2 59.5 so the value of these cells is 59.5. Okay, let's get the midpoint of 69.5 and 89.5. I'm going to add 69.5 plus 89.5 all over 2. This will give me 159 all over 2. So the midpoint is 79.5. 79.5. So the value of x for these cells is 79.5. So let's take the midpoint of 89.5 and 109.5. If you add 89.5 plus 109.5, uh, you are going to get 199. 199. So the midpoint is divided by 2. So 199 divided by 2, that is 99.5. 99 99.5. So the midpoint of these cells is 99. 0.5. So midpoint of 109.5 and 139.5, that is 124.5. And for these cells, that is 154.5. So we have successfully get the midpoint of the class interval. That is the value of x. Now, let us calculate the fx. fx will be the product of f, which is the frequency, and x. So to get the fx of these cells, I'm going to multiply 9 by 59.5 that is 535.5 and the value of these cells will be the product of 12 and 79.5 that is 954.0 954.0 and for um, the value of fx for this cell will be the product of 13 and 99.5 that is 120 and 1293.5 1 to 93.5 So the value of these cells will be the product of 16 and 124.5 That is 1992.0 So the value of these cells will be the product of 10 and 154.5 So the value for that is 1545 Zero. So I have gotten the value of fx. Now from the formula of mean, I need the summation fx, that is the sum of this column. You know that this column is for fx, so I need the sum of the value in this column. So the sum, if you punch your calculator, the sum is 6320. So the sum of fx is 6320. Now, I have gotten summation fx, which is 3320. I still need to sum the frequency because from the formula, 
The formula of mean is given by this summation fx all over summation f. So I still need to sum the column of frequency. So if you add 9, 12, 13, 16, and 10 together, the value is 60. So I have gotten summation fx and summation f. I can proceed to calculate the main value now. The, the main value for this data is equals to summation fx, which is 6320 all over summation f, which is 60. The main value is equals to 6,820 divided by 60. The main value is 105.33. So, I have gotten the main. Now, from the formula for coefficient of skewedness, I still need to get the median of this data. Therefore, that's what I'm going to calculate now. The of median is given by this. Where L is the lower class boundary, N is the total numbers of observation, that is the total numbers of frequency, and that's 60. CFB is the cumulative frequency before the median class, and FM is the frequency of the median class. High is the class width, which is gotten by subtracting the upper class boundary from the lower class boundary. Now, let us proceed. Since I have known the formula, I have to first determine the class interval of the median class. To get the class interval of the median class, I will have to divide the total numbers of observation by 2. And the total numbers of observation is also the same thing as the total numbers of frequency. So for this, I'm going to have n all over 2. Don't forget that the total numbers of frequency is 60. So I'm going to have 60 all over 2. That gives me 30. Now, after getting this, I have to construct the cumulative frequency. So I'm going to have another column which stands for cumulative frequency. The cumulative frequency is gotten by adding the frequency of subsequent cells with the frequency of the cells that we want to get its cumulative frequency. So, to get the cumulative frequency of these cells, since there is no cells before the frequency of these cells, that is, there is no cell before this 9. So, this one will be 9 plus 0, that is 9. To get the cumulative frequency of these cells, I'm going to add 12 plus 9, that is 21. So, to get the frequency of these cells, it will be the summation of 9 plus 12 plus 13, and that gives me 34. So, to get the cumulative frequency of these cells, I'm going to add 9 plus 12 plus 13 plus 16, that is 40. So, to get the cumulative frequency of these cells, of these cells I'm going to add 9 plus 12 plus 13 plus 16 and plus 10, that gives me 50. So, I have gotten the cumulative frequency column. Now, in order to get the class interval of the median class, I will check where 30 falls into among the cumulative frequency. And if you check 30 falls within this range, so the class interval which belongs to where 30 falls into will be the median class interval. So, I'm going to trace this down to the left hand side. So, this will be the median class interval. This is median class interval 89.5 and 109.5 that is the median class interval after getting the median class interval i have to get the lower class boundary of the median class to get the lower class boundary of the median class let me first write out the median class interval the class interval of the median class interval the class interval of the median class is 89.5 and 109.5 109.5 so to get the class boundary of this median class i'm going to subtract don't forget that this is the um lower class interval lower and this is the upper class interval upper so to get the lower class boundary of this class interval i will have to subtract 0 0.5.89.5 so to get the class boundary, let me put it class boundary. I'm going to have 89.5 minus 0 0.5. That will be the what? Lower class boundary. This is for lower class boundary. Let me put it lower. And to get the upper class boundary, the upper class boundary is gotten by adding 0 0.5 with the upper class interval. So I'm going to have 109.5 plus 0 0.5. So, 89.5 minus 0 0.5, that is 89. 89. 109.5 plus 0 0.5, that is 110. 
So the class boundary of the class um, the class boundary of the median class is 89 and 110. Now I have gotten the lower class boundary. So the next thing to get from this formula is the class width, which is the class height. To get the class width, the class width is the difference between the upper class boundary and the lower class boundary. Don't forget that this is the upper class boundary and this is the lower class boundary. To get the difference between the upper class boundary will be 110 minus 89. This will give me 21. So the class white, which is I, is 21. Now, the frequency of the median class is the next thing I'm going to get. The frequency of the median class is 13. According, since my median class is 89.5 and 109.5, the frequency of the median class is 13. So Fm is equal to 13. So I have gotten the frequency of the median class. I have gotten the class width. The next thing to get is the cumulative frequency before the median class. Don't forget that the median class is this. The cumulative frequency of, uh, of the median class is 34. The cumulative frequency before the median class is 21. So I'm going to have CFB is equal to 21. So I have gotten the class width. I have gotten the frequency of the median class. I have gotten the cumulative frequency before the median class. And the lower class boundary, which is L, is 89. Don't forget that I have gotten the lower class boundary and the upper class boundary. So L is equal to 89. So I have gotten all the parameters that I needed in this question. The next thing is to solve the question. So median is equal to L. Don't forget that L is 89. So I'm going to have 89 in this place. 89 plus into bracket N over 2. We have, got, we have already gotten L or N over 2, which is 60 over 2. That is 30. So plus into bracket 30, the subtraction sign minus the cumulative frequency before the median class that is 21 so i'm going to have 21 in this place all over the frequency of the median class that is 13 so i'm going to have 13 multiplied by class width the class width is 21 so so median is equals to 89 plus 30 minus 21 that is 9 9 over 13 multiplied by 21. Median is equal to 89 plus 9 divided by 13. That will give me 0 0.6923. 0 0.6923 multiplied by 21. Don't forget that this uh, the sign between 9 and 21 is multiplication. So median is equals to 89 if you multiply this you are going to get 14.5 theory 14.5 theory 5 theory 8 theory sorry so addition of this will give me 103.54 so i have gotten the median the median md is equals to 103 0.54. Now let us proceed to calculate the standard deviation. Don't forget that we are using this formula to compute our parameters. I have gotten the mean, I have gotten the median. The next thing, the last parameters here is the standard deviation. Now, don't forget that the standard deviation is given by this formula. Standard deviation S is equal to the square roots of summation fx squared all over summation f minus summation fx all over summation f into bracket all squared. This is the formula for calculating standard deviation. Now, from this formula, I still need to get the summation fx squared. So, I'm going to have another column in this place, which will stand for fx squared. I have already gotten fx, which is the value of this column. So to get the value of fx squared, I'm going to multiply these values with x. That is fx multiplied by x will give us fx squared. So to get the value of these cells, I'm going to multiply 535.5 multiplied by 59.5. And that gives me 3186, 3186 point two five.
So to get the value of the next cells, I'm going to multiply fx 954.0 multiplied by 79.5. That is 7,000. 75,843. 75,843.0. So to get the value of the next cells, I'm going to multiply 1,293.5 multiplied by 99.5. That is 128. 128.703.25. So the value of the next cells is 24. 8004. So for the next cells, 23870.2.5. So I've gotten the value of the fx squared. So I still need the summation of fx squared. So I'm going to add all these values together. If you add all the value in these cells together, the summation is 723115. That is 723,115. So after getting that, you can check the formula. Is there any parameters that we also need to get again? There is not. So we proceed to use this formula. Standard deviation is equal to the square root of summation fx squared is 723,115. 723,115 all over summation f, which is 60. 60 minus the square of summation fx. Don't forget that summation fx is 6320. So I'm going to have 6320 all over summation f is 60. So I'm going to have all over 60. So standard deviation and s is equal to the square root of if you divide 723,115 divided by 60, that is 120, 120. 51.92 minus 6 uh, if you divide 6,320 um, 6, divided by 60 oh I forgot to put squared so if you divide it and raise it to the power of 2 you are going to get 11094.41 so s is equal to the square root of 957 0.51 so standard deviation is equal to 30.94 so we have gotten the standard deviation as s is equal to 30.94 so we have gotten all the needed parameters in this question we can proceed to use the formula of the coefficient of skewness now skewness is equal to theory multiplied by theory into bracket don't forget that mean is what? 105.33. So I'm going to have 105.33 minus the median is 103.54. 103.54 all over the standard deviation. Don't forget that the standard deviation is 30.94. So all over 30.94. So the coefficient of skewness, C of skewness is equal to. If you multiply by point of calculator, you are going to get 1.79 all over 30.94. So the coefficient of skewness, coefficient of skewness is equal to if you multiply by 1.79, that is 5.37, 5.37 all over 30.94. So the coefficient of skewness. Is equal to 0 0.17 0 0.17 theory 7 so, so therefore the coefficient of skewness for this distribution is 0 0.17 theory 7 since the coefficient of skewness is between minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 this means that this distribution is symmetrically skewed thank you very much for watching the video please I would like you to subscribe to my channel if you have not done so and click on the notification bell so that when I drop new video, you are going to get updates. Thank you.